Um, calling to order the Board of Aldermen regular meeting for March 15th, 2022. And we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance first. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so as things around the world continue in the manner in which they are, um, I would like to hold another moment of silence in recognition of those who are fighting and have lost their lives in Ukraine. Thank you. Moving on, we have um, items on our consent agenda. Town Clerk. Letter A, Board of Aldermen's meeting minutes, February the 7th, 2022, agenda session man meeting minutes, and February 15th, 2022, regular meeting minutes. Do I have a motion to approve items on the consent agenda? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimously passes. Moving on to public comments. This is an opportunity for any of our citizens to share any concerns or wishes for the town of Elon. Each person will be asked to stand, give their name, share their address, and they will be given three minutes. Anyone on the phone? Ask him to speak. All right, hearing none, we will close the public comment section. All right, ordinances and resolutions. Letter A, ordinance to make certain amendments to the Elon Code of Ordinances. So just for reference, Pam, are you gonna give us just a little update? I'll be happy to do that, Mayor. And just as a reminder, this uh, public hearing was continued to this evening as we had some, um, I guess, finer points uh, to, to work through with the town attorney, which uh, we have done, I believe, is Kelly on? Yes, she is. She may uh, want to speak to that. She worked with uh, Mr. Kalo to get the language correct uh, as it applies to the statute that's in place now and the imprisonment uh, language has been stricken because that that is not included in the, in the current statute and uh, before I turn that over to her I also want to let you know that that we added one uh, other clarification in the ordinance having to do with um, uh, the process when uh, public nuisance uh, violations occur and we wanted to make it clear that um, warnings could be could be applied for first offenses. Um, that had been our practice during my entire time here until recently when we received some um, some direction from the board that they'd like to go immediately to a, a fine for the first offense. And just as some background, what occurred when uh, Kristen began doing that was we started to be maybe flooded is not quite the correct word, but it felt a little bit like it uh, flooded with appeals. And it's something that we've never had before. We've never had a single appeal for a code enforcement uh, violation. And we have uh, basically no guidance in our code of ordinances for how to handle those. Um, it <coughs> directs the manager to hear appeals. And he, um, I think, made, made a very good point that that really should be handled by um, a citizen committee such as our Board of Adjustment. Um, but they don't have, they wouldn't, wouldn't have any guidance either. There's nothing in there that says, uh, you know, you can overturn the violation under the following circumstances. So um, we put all of those appeals on hold until we could come to you to, to, to talk about the, the process. And I will also tell you that um, 
whether it's a warning or a fine for the first event offense, what we're seeing is that the violators are abating the nuisance almost immediately. Um, so it was adding some, you know, additional an additional step, some processes uh, for, for staff. And the proposal now is that the language be very clear about what can happen uh, for first offenses and uh, this is staff's proposed language that a first offense um, would receive a warning if the violation has been abated within five calendar days. So Kristen would go out and take another look, which she does anyway, to see if they have abated it. Uh, if it has not been abated within five calendar days, the $100 fine would be imposed. And then the second and third offense, we've not changed. So the second offense, uh, and it does not specify whether there was a, a warning or a violation uh, or, or a fine for a second offense, it would be 250 and for a third, 500. So that's what we're proposing. We, we really did not see that we were gaining any benefit from going straight to fines other than uh, collecting some money. Um, we were still seeing that the uh, violations were being abated. In other words, the trash was being cleaned up uh, if, that, if that was the instance uh, that, was, that was being, um, being cited and just wanted to sort of streamline this, not get bogged down in paperwork. And, uh, and I, I really feel like we're, we're gonna get the same result either way. So that's the proposal here. This is still public hearing. You still can uh, make any amendments to this to you, that, that you like. If you, if you, if you wanna strike the, the, uh, the opportunity for a warning, uh, if you want to leave the language as is, that's entire, entirely up to you. But because the public hearing was still open and there was some question about um, how to move forward with these appeals, uh, we wanted to, 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 tack, to, to tack this on to what we're doing with the Code of Ordinances this evening. And with that, that that's really all I have. Kelly may, may uh, have something to add regarding the, the, the changed language that she worked through with, with Joe. Yeah, ours was just, uh, as Pam mentioned, fine tuning um, 14.4 statute 14 or NC statute 14.4 has been amended several times over the years. And we just wanted to make sure we had it right. It included um, some language that was not correct. Joe has since correct that. Um, I don't think there's any more finer points to go over. There was just a handful of changes overall through the ordinances. And I'm happy to ask answer any questions if you all have them. Right, I think what, what, what you'll see is that the same change is applied in multiple cases where the um, imprisonment of up to 20 days has been, has been stricken from the language and that it's clarified that it will be a class three mis misdemeanor and a fine of $100. Do we need to reopen the public comment section? I mean, it's open, right? It, it remained open, and so it, it is open now. So we need to close it before we can take a vote. Yeah. Yes. If you have any other any other folks who want to speak speak to it before then, but otherwise, I do have one question back to the cemetery. When we received that information last week about facing. Um, you know which, which direction it should be facing. Can people have a stone marker that has uh, writing on both sides of the stone? Yeah, it was a good question, and Mon Monty brought that up. And and we're not. This change doesn't prohibit it. We don't. We don't prohibit it now. And this change doesn't prohibit it. But we can certainly make but it more. One sided. You wanted it to be on the one side that was facing. Facing facing the grave, so that so that it was one sided, yeah. Right, so that viewing viewing the inscription, you're not sort of imposing on the the grave just behind it. Is that clear enough that we don't have to change that language at all anymore uh, about that? Uh, that that I guess that's the point for discussion. Uh, it doesn't prohibit inscriptions on both sides. Okay. And if we'd like to change the language to, to to, and it would be I think a simple change. Um, because now it says upright grave markers installed after this date shall have the marker inscription face the graves of the individual or group being signified by the marker. Um, it could say shall only have the marker inscription or it could say 
it could just add another provision that says um, our white markers shall be inscribed only on one side. And I, and I would hate to, to, to limit it to one side only if, because some people do things on both sides, you know, have a, like a saying or something on the back. But as long as it's clear that if it's one side or that particular type of inscription that talks about their name, that kind of thing, that, that should be on the grave. I just, it, if that's clear, I think that would be enough. I just don't want to make it nebulous so that someone, you know, what might come, like you say, <laughs> cause actually more issues than not, you know because clarity is the help you know, that comes with that. You're, you're right. And, and I, I think it would be a, a fairly rare instance. It's just that it, that it did happen to occur just, just recently. And there was, um, you know, we had a, a, a foot stone that was immediately next to an upright stone. And in order to see the inscription on the upright stone, you really had to be standing on the grave of the other. Oh, gotcha. You know, the, the other grave. Um, but ha happy to make any adjustments to this if you if you think that some additional clarity would be beneficial. Madam Mayor, does that hold up from our voting on it? Is that what you wor our worry is? I mean, do we no, want? No, we can vote on it with a suggested change. Absolutely. Well, I, I well, I would just make that suggested change. That it's clear that if it's one side or that the, it's the information about the the deceased that it's on the one side that's facing the grave. And that, but that it's that you are allowed to, to be able to print on both sides of the marker. So it might be worded to say upright grave markers with inscriptions only on one side shall have the inscription that face the grave of the person it's being. Or, that, or, or even specifically saying that the information about, I don't, I don't know how to best say that. So I'm there's not, probably some specific language that the engraver actually uses for, you know, like a book has a title. We're talking about the title of the headstone, right? So be the family name. Family name. With, I'm sure that on the maybe it's the surname. Yeah, you know, it raises a question. If, if they want to put their name on both sides of that, it's still a problem, obviously, from what you're sharing, is that if you're the adjacent grave plot, and it creates confusion. And that's the reason why we're we're talking about this. So, how do you word it so that you limit what they can put on both sides? Is it the engraving itself that's the issue, or is it the fact that someone put a footstone up against a headstone, which I've seen, and that is problematic? It it, it, it was both, but we really weren't trying to address the the proximity of the two, of the two stones because we don't have any means to. There, it, in, in the older part of the cemetery, there's just not mm -hmm. space between. Um, this was intended to address the, the, the situation with that also, in, in addition to that, also the inscription was on the, what I would consider to be the back of the upright stone. So I had to stand on the footstone or on the grave that the footstone was marking in order to read and, and it was just a name. It didn't have much more information on it. Uh, I don't think we have very many instances of this. And we, we have more space in the newer section between where that sort of encroachment um, would, wouldn't be a problem. So you're saying, are we trying to solve a problem that's really not going to be that big of a problem? I, 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 I hate to say that because it might come up again next week. And yet, it, in, in, you know, in four years, we haven't seen uh, this occur in my, you know, my time here. And Diane may have long, certainly has longer history than that. But um, I think it'll be a very rare problem. I think that we, um, we had uh, the, the family where the footstone uh, grave uh, they expressed some distress over this proximity and the, the way the, the, the upright stone on the other family's plot were uh, the way it faced. And we, we assured them that we would take a look at this and see if we couldn't prevent future instances of it, but that we were not going to ask it for any changes to be made to what was already there. If I'm correct, I mean, should all the the headstones are, are worried face toward the road because they're all lined up there, right? They're all facing, they're all parallel, right? They're all facing the road. And I guess if you go to other cemeteries, you may see a road that goes between the cemetery. Is the reason they did that because 
that plot was right near the drive and that was easy for the family to identify. So they didn't have to go around and look and see. Is that the reason they did it? I think that's the reason. It the, the, this grave is not close to the road, yeah. but, but it but it faces the road. The, by road, I mean uh, South Oak or, or Front Front Street. Yeah. And as you come into one of the drives in the cemetery, it's just immediately adjacent. So as you come in, you you, you could see the name, even though it was really the back. It, it might you know that's my assessment of it. It was the back of the headstone. So that may be. The reason that they did it that way. Um, just a thought, since it sounds like there might be more conversation or a decent amount of change, do we want to vote for what's currently proposed with more to come back? Well, we can um, list because otherwise we're voting heard. on something. Please, without... what we've heard. I may just kind of come back with. I don't know about Monty, but uh, I'm feeling like if you know, as long as you kind of know what the spirit of, of it is that. I don't think that we would be going after anyone if they went, went on both sides of the uh, of the gravestone, but we but if it's definitely on one side only, and this seems to be sharing that pretty clearly, I think from that perspective, mm -hmm. as long as we're not going to in the in the rare instances that it could happen, and someone says, "Well, I'm going to have engraving on both sides," you know, someone might put a Bible text or something right. or a poem or something. I, I wouldn't want to keep them from doing something like that. And I think your what you the inscription I think is kind of clear what that means now, now that I've read reread it a couple of times. So I'm I don't know about you, Monty, but that's not like yeah, I'm fine. I, I just don't want to overcomplicate it. Yeah, that's my problem. And I just I was afraid that yeah. after we started talking about it, it just got For too a problem that really hasn't happened to this one time. Yeah. That we know of. Yeah. Um, so let me just, for my clarity, am I understanding that the way it's worded now is is sufficient, or th are you interested in it saying four upright headstones that have inscriptions um, on only one side, that side shall face the grave of the person being recognized? So, so that would still leave the door open for them to have it on both on both sides. I think the language now that I look at is sufficient as it is for, what, for the kinds of numbers you're talking about considering it's been a very yeah. rare yeah. Time situation yeah that's how i would say yeah. if we can if we start to see more please come to us and let yeah. us know yeah we'll make whatever changes we have to make yeah. so i think that's a good idea all right so before we close the public comment section are there any individuals on the zoom that would like to make a comment you're welcome to hit the raise hand button. All good. All good. All right, we're going to close the public comment section. Can I ask a question? For yeah. you? So, so what we're going to do, obviously, is instead of having a first time fine, we're going to basically give them a, a warning, right? That's what makes sense. I mean, our objective is is compliance, not to collect money. And I think just like if Quinn was pulled over the road for speeding, uh, he would like the courtesy of getting a, a warning as opposed to a ticket, right? I, I would definitely. Yeah, yeah. make you feel better. <laughs> so, you know, as a board of aldermen, you should be. You don't have your wallet. wallet for your I don't have my wallet, then. But I do think I do think that's that right approach, and that we're just trying to yeah. see compliance, and not. And you've seen more abatement paper from that. Yeah. Yeah, and from my from what I remember of the decision, it was really focused on the noise ordinance that got us, I think, correct me if I'm wrong. No, no, it was when Mr. Gary came in and we were like, we need to make sure. Was it? I thought it started with the noise ordinance because we were having issues with warnings being dealt out. Maybe this is two separate instances. It, it might be because because I, I do recall when Mr. Gary came in, uh, there was a desire by all of us to, to try to uh, bring some resolution to that. And we had, uh, this was in September of last year where we came to you and we had language um, regarding the, 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 we had some amendments to the, to the nuisance ordinances which is separate from noise. And we were um, not proposing a fine increase at that time. And the board directed us to increase the fines and not only that, to go straight to fines and not, not give warnings for first offenses. Mm -hmm. 
and I'll say uh, that we that the practice had been warnings up to that point. Um, although I, the ordinance really what really didn't clearly direct us that way. Um, it just it seemed to be working so we could continue to do it. And uh, what we're proposing now is to go back to that as long as it's abated within within five days. And this does not include noise ordinances. I remember it. I mean, I wasn't on the board then, but I know that that's what it does. It does not. It, okay. it, it does not because there's a separate separate penalty section penalty um, for noise described for noise ordinances, which which we're also making some three. amendments to here. That's what I thought. Which is uh, guilty of a class three misdemeanor and fifty dollar fine. Yeah. No flexibility in that. So I had a follow up question. I think the right approach. The question I really is. Is it a warning per property owner or the residents? Because as we know, there's a lot of rental property that turns over. It's per so per address. This year, what happens next year if there are new tenants? Mm -hmm. Does that warning apply for a period of time? It's an opportunity to remind the landlord that they've had a warning at their property and that they need to have a conversation well, with their renters. Based about on because we're finding the property owners, right? We are, and they and they may pass that on to their tenants. And it's a warning for a violation. Mm -hmm. so there was noise or something else that was uh, out of compliance. It's it's one warning, or could it apply to multiple things? So, uh, so would not apply to noise yeah. because it very specifically states uh, misdemeanor and fifty dollar fine. There, this would be for party trash, it, it, you know, that's the mo most typical. Mm -hmm. You might also see where there's indoor furniture outdoors. That's something that, that the ordinance pr prohibits. Um, and we do, uh, it's, it would be per address and it would be the, the violation would be sent to the, well, we've now send it to the tenant as well, but ultimately we expect the property owner, the only person we really can go after if it really should come to liens, for example, is the prop is the property owner. So we expect payment from them. If they get it from someone else, that's up to them. And we we do not start the clock over with a with a new school year or calendar year. So a second offense at that address, uh, if we have it on the books, but is we changed hands like we're sold. You're not going to apply a fine to the new landowner, are you? Because a lot of these properties do sell. Yeah, that's that's a good question, and and and, and, it, and it sort of, it, it, I think it's a separate question about yeah, how, yeah, how we no, not the address. Well, again, but, but we we want it to we want the violation. To address what happened at that property, and that owner may own multiple properties, as as, as you mentioned. Right. Well, no, not not individual. Property. Example would be is if Mark owned this property, he got a warning. He sold the property to to Emily, and Emily did the same thing. Would she be fine, or would she be? You know, I'll have to look to see what the practice has been. I will say that that it's not. I don't think that that they're going back and checking to see if a property has changed hands. That that's just an, a, an additional level of sort of investigation that we can do, but we're not doing. Um, Can that be something we just use common sense with when it comes up, or is or we just the names associated with the tax record of the property? So if it was 100 Main Street, Mark Green, and then next year it's 100 Main Street in the start. Yeah, you'd recognize this a different offender. Well, we went went and, and, and compared that against you know all of the violations that you've sent for 100 Main Street, and we can do that. Um, but but it's an extra extra level of investigation. I mean, she's not going to recognize it. She would have to go and, com and compare it and see is this the same property under? And she may be doing that. You knew you would know she had a warning because that's you would have seen that. So when you pull the warning for that address. You would see the property owner was was more green. Maybe in the reporting, she needs to start tracking property owner. 
if she's not already. If she's not already. If she's already having to pull property owner for sending the notification. And she, and she may be may be doing that. I will say that our our rental properties don't change hands that frequently. They do change yeah, I'm hands. Surprised you said that, Ronnie. Um, but but I'll I'll need to check with her, and I guess what am, what am I hearing that the board would like to do with that? I, I think it makes sense to. It goes to the owner of that property, and if the owner changes, then the, the clock would start over. I think. Mm -hmm. I think that's the common sense approach. Right. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, we end up back in the appeal process. Oh, wait a second. I've never gotten a warning. Right. Right. It happened to, to be the case where it's a new owner and then they say, hey, wait, I haven't been warned. Then that would be an appeal, but that right. wouldn't be something that's going to be happening like we're having now. Right. It, is that? Yeah. And, and, and it, oh, okay, you're right. Okay. It's your warning. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be a process to do something like that. It's all right. Here's your warning. Yeah. Um, well, the problem that came when we stopped giving warnings and went right to a fine, and that's what's caused all these appeals. Are you saying that if we make this vote tonight, that a lot of those appeals will go away, that you're going to go ahead and change those to warnings, or is this more? That would, that would be my desire, that, that, they, that, that, that this will be applied retroactively. All of those, and I did confirm this with Kristen, they were all abated by, by the property owner or the tenant. So, and at least one has already paid, um, and I'd like to I'd like to be able to re reimburse him that that fine. Okay. I'm fine with that. Yeah. And I will I will mm -hmm. follow up with Kristen. It could very well be that she's that she's doing this. Um, mm -hmm. You know, she files these by address, and she's certainly familiar with most of our, particularly our, our landlords that own multiple properties. So I'll check with her to see if she is tracking violations and, and the, the sequence of the violations when a property changes hands and, and ask her if she's not doing that to do that. And, and I guess what I'm hearing is that it would start the clock all over again when a new owner takes over the property. Yeah, I think that's fair. And, and Pam, when there's a violation Obviously, she mails certified or whatever else to the owner. Does she also post it on the property? She does. She hangs it on, on the doorknob, and she's mailing it to occupant at that address. Well, yeah. It's different from the, from the owner's address. Um, I, I was just curious, if the, the five days versus, say, three days to remedy it. Is that the, the, the reason I did that is because she works part-time, and, 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 you know, we can we can shorten that. I just want to, you know, give her time to, to be here and go drive by and see what this. Yeah, I was just thinking worst case scenario, you know, Friday night party, it's trashed all weekend. Monday morning, she sends a notice and gives them five days. We're into the next weekend. No, she's going to give them a warning the day she sees it. But gives them five, but she doesn't see it till Monday. Gives them five days to remedy it. We're into the next weekend already. So that wasn't really the intent of the, she's not telling them they have five days to, to remedy it. She's checking to see if they have remedy it, remedied it in five days. Okay. The warnings, uh, I can't remember now how many, how many days it, 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 it give, gives them. So if you give them a warning, you're not allowing them the appeal if in five days they haven't abated it. Then they would go go directly to. Then the fine would be imposed. There wouldn't be an opportunity for appeal, right? Or would there? I don't think there would be anything to. Appeal. Yeah, I don't. I suppose they yeah, I think it would resolve. We, we've got to work on the appeal on the appeal language, but the, you know, if they haven't been fined, what harm has been done? One of the things that's been clear is that the action that was taken to 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 take away the warning has caused some issues. You're right. We take it away now. Let's keep an eye on it and see what happens again. I think, again, this is one of those things that we can see. I understand, I think, what Rich is saying in terms of when it's discovered or when it's, you know, found out, we, mm -hmm. we start the clock running from that time. Right. But, but, but my sense is, is that if the abating is happening right now mm -hmm. and they're getting it done, that's really the goal. And so. That's right. And, and 
you know, we, we, we'll check on that too. I mean, I, I think it's a separate issue. How many days is she giving them when she writes that warning? Um, I don't recall now how many she gave them. It may have been five. Uh, and if that needs to sh be less than that, we can tackle that with another, another amendment to the ordinance. Right now, we just want to provide her the opportunity to give warnings instead of immediate fines and uh, get these appeals off of the, off of the books. Okay. Any other questions? Do I have a motion to um, pass the ordinance as written? I'll make the motion. Are oh, the ordinance changes, sorry. Sorry, all right, second. No, second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Unanimous vote. Thank you. Moving on to letter B, LDO text amendment number 22-03 regarding conditional planning districts. Um, I know we had quite the presentation last week, but are there any updates that you wish to provide, Pam? I, I really have none. Um, I think we had good um, you know, question and answer session. Um, uh, Mr. Huffine is here again tonight. He's our applicant and uh, Tony Tate is with him who has been involved in, in this uh, as well, unless there are sort of clarifying questions that the board may have at, at this stage. Um, happy to, to have the board move towards a motion and a vote if you're ready. Any questions? Do I have a motion? Oh wait, sorry. We need to vote for, first we need a motion for the text amendment. And then we'll need to vote on the consistency statement because we want to do that separately. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, I would prefer that you do it separately. And although it's a little bit lengthy, I would like just for, for the record to, to recite the um, okay. consistency statement for you. I'd like to move the text amendment. I'll make a motion for the text amendment. Okay. Second. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Unanimous. All right. Second part. Then the second part is the statement of land use uh, plan consistency uh, and what has been drafted by staff and recommended by the planning board is the board of aldermen concludes that the above described amendment is consistent with the envisioned Elon 24, 2040 future land use plan based on the following recommendations from the plan. <clears throat> LU 2.3, support rezoning applications for changes in zoning that demonstrate the intent to implement the plan and amend the town's LDO to facilitate future development and redevelopment as described in this plan. LU 8.10, continue investigating how the town of Elon community members conceptualize the small town feel of the town of Elon and incorporate these findings into the LDO in ways that protect the character and quality of life of the community. EV6, encourage mixed use development that blends a variety of uses, including office space, residential shopping and entertainment. And the second part states that the Board of Aldermen concludes that the above described amendment is reasonable and in the public interest and in that it provides flexibility in tailoring development proposals and uses to better meet recommendations in the future land use plan, allowing for specific mixes of uses and creating development projects that contribute in positive ways to the character and quality of life in Elon. Thank you. Any questions? Do I have a motion to approve the consistency statement? Mayor, I'll, I'll move and accept it. Second? I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to. Thank you for being here. Yes. Wait, where are you going? <laughs> Dinner. <laughs> Letter C, charter amendment, change style of governing board to town council. Is that you, Rich? Um, or whomever. You know, you've done all the work for, but I'll talk about it if you want. Or Diane. So, um, <clears throat> After last week's meeting, um, there were some questions asked about when it was changed from uh, Board of Commissioners to Board of Aldermen. And so I went back and did additional research 
And initially I had put that the change happened in uh, 1963, but as you can see in your packet, I have uh, attached the minutes leading up to this change that occurred April 6, 1961. There was a uh, special <coughs> meeting conducted. And um, the, the only thing that occurred at that meeting was approval that the um, commissioners be changed to the Board of Aldermen. And following that meeting, um, May 9th is when it went before the um, legislature. At that time, that was the process. As you can also see in your packet that um, the, you have the resolution of intent, which is what we're asking the board to approve for tonight. And in your packet, you'll see where the general statutes outline changes that can be made on local level, uh, which no longer has to go to the legislature and through the legal municipality. And general statutes, um, uh, 10, excuse me, 168A102, we follow that process of, of what's outlined in 101, then uh, once the board adopts the resolution of intent, conduct a public hearing at its next meeting, and then the ordinance is adopted at its next regular meeting, then it's all done. It's a done deal, basically. And my question to the board, which I meant to ask, because it came up in conversation last week, is whether you're going to call yourself council persons or council members or council members. Councilors? So we need to be specific on that. And that's what I will actually include uh, for the public hearing and um, in the ordinance itself. So there's no indication as to why they just transition to Board of Aldermen. I circle all of the uh, lead, minutes leading up to this actual minute. It looks like they were changing some of the ways they were doing things. If you yeah. really look at the minutes, that was when they established the the two and the three. Two three yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's when they put it all together. Diane, in your research since 1961, was it ever proposed to change it again? No. So never was any discussion about changing the board all since 19. Well, let me let me back up. Um, at one point in time, when Ron Classic was on the board, it was it was brought up, but not firm. It was just a conversation, basically. Well, and for someone who's only lived in North Carolina, you know the terminology is used. Um, and I, I did a little, little work, and you know, obviously Chicago still uses the term board of aldermen. St. Louis, Missouri still uses it. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but it's interesting to start looking at communities that still use that, particularly in North Carolina. I did, there's a lot of cities and towns that still that still use that terminology. Correct. Um, and I've even seen some that have altered it to board of alders, which is kind of odd um, terminology, but you're an alder person or... Um, but it does raise a good question. What's what's what should we be called? At one time they were called commissioners. Now we all think of county commissioners um, or board of commissions in some areas mm -hmm. for, for boards. Um, but it does raise some good questions about why do they come up with board volume? Was that a commonly used term? I guess Gibson also uses board of aldermen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we only have the three options by statute, right? Three options. Mm -hmm. We have commissioner, alderman, council. Mm -hmm. Well, so commissioner is still a possibility. Yeah. I'm not saying I want it, but I'm just saying I didn't know that. I was thinking, I was just maybe assuming that maybe it had changed. Council is the most recognizable term. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Yeah. I like town Yeah, council. that's what you hear. That's pretty much what you hear everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like that's what's understood because that's the way I define it. You know, when I was on the board of aldermen, 
what is that? It's town council. Oh yeah, that's right, town council. Okay, I get it. Well, I would like to thank you, Diane, for doing such great work. And it is interesting when you look at their cash on hand for January 1st, it was $13,000. So, you know, we should feel really good about our budget well, at this point. But thank you for taking the time to do this. I'm sure it was not easy. Well, uh, just to give you a little back history, not to, to belabor this, is the book is so delicate and so old. I had to take a picture with my phone, send the pictures <laughs> by email to my um, email address and then put it all together that way. <laughs> I just didn't want to mess up any other pages. So yeah, it predates me. This, That's this is sure. probably a conversation, not for right now, but I have to ask it because now it's on my mind. How, how do we ensure that that information is preserved? Well, is it in a fireproof safe? It, it is in our safe at currently. Um, that was one of the, the um, items I was going to propose in the budget. It is so expensive. So we've put that on hold again. <laughs> um, Maybe there's an opportunity for when we redo town hall or build a new town hall that there's this beautiful like vaulted room. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, where are we going to get the money? <laughs> Maybe we could find one from an old bank and just move it. We have one of those in. Uh, we do in the park, in the police department. Oh yeah, in Lyle's office. They built it. They built the yeah room around the vault. So would be would it be council? I've never heard of councilor. Is that? Yeah, I think it's. Is that something you created? It's a council no, member. It'd be a board. It'd be. Town council. This town council. Individually, you'd be councilors. Council. As opposed to council members, council men, council women, council people. But isn't councilor spelled different? Council. It's just two councilors. So, so the only neutral term would be commissioner. Councilor is neutral. Council member. Well, I'm saying if you just want to say council member, commissioner, it's you can say council member, and you say you're a board of the council, and you're a council member. But I think you've also raised, Monty, you've raised, also raised the idea that it could be a, confusing to the county or the county commissioners, yeah. too. With, with an S, it's an attorney. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you it says with a, a member of a council is a counselor. Counselor. And it's right. sometimes confused with counselor. With an S, which is. <laughs> right. It is. I mean, I would say. But again, People will use all kinds of names, but I think what you were sharing earlier, Emily, was that the clarity of who we are, town council is the clearest as a for, as opposed to a board of all <clears throat> for the for the general population, that, that would probably be the clear the clearest way. Is that what made you decide that you wanted to kind of address it from that perspective? Yeah, I mean, I just I just felt like no one knows in the four years. I can't tell you how many times I had to answer what that was. Mm -hmm. And my response is always, I'm counsel, you know? I've done the same thing. And, and my, my it, I mean, when my dad talks about it, he's like, oh yeah, she's on town council. Because, you know, that's what people can relate to, I think. I would say in lieu that our, we're hoping that our new mayor will be here for quite a while and out of respect for what, she would like to do to make this small change. I would like to move forward with this as a council. Um, well, I got a couple questions. Yeah, I have a couple questions. <laughs> um, so we obviously saw the cost of what, it, and that was if we did it right now, we just threw that whole book away and printed a whole new book. Um, but we're getting ready to do amendments now with it, rewrite some stuff. So you said all we have to do is we can do it in incremental stages if we just put it uh, a sentence at the top saying every time it says board of all remittances. And that would cost us 25 cents cost of a stamp to do that. $19. Anytime they touch a page, it's $19. Okay. So if they add in that line on you know one of the cover pages, 
that it would go in with all the other amendments that we're doing. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, I, I like going that route and moving in between incrementally taking out. That, that, that's what I would I agree. It, as long as that doesn't cause an <clears throat> issue from a municipal standpoint, I mean, that just to me makes sense. Uh, it, it makes perfect sense to me. I've seen it done that way before. I, I, I can't vouch that there's not some quirk in North Carolina law that is different, but that seems to be a reasonable approach. Yeah. Um, I mean, you frequently see, you know, anytime uh, the word he is used, it means he, she, them, whatever. Um, you know, it's, it's an expedient way of, of addressing the change without, you know, expending yeah. a, a significant amount of money to, to change everything all at once. And then anytime we do an ordinance change, we will make those amendments because we're already, we're already changing things. So one question that I have is related to their information. So they're saying that 75% would need to be updated. Yes. But if you just search, so they search for board, and Board of Aldermen, yes, yes. where in many cases that could be reporting to planning board, right. as mentioned here, exactly. and not Board of Aldermen. And that's if what, you do a search for just Board of Aldermen, there's only 99 instances in our code of ordinances. And 350 pages? 99 instances. Board of Aldermen is, is the oh. term. Now, well, if it says board, board. Right. Yeah, yeah, then, you know, But, you know, who knows? Do we ever refer to just the board and not board of aldermen in our code of ordinances? I, I just. Uh, so if you did the word search on aldermen, would you still get 99? So that's 1800. Yeah. Aldermen, well, 102. Aldermen is 102. 102 times it's mentioned. Um, Planning board, well, this says there's only four. And if, if you look at the sections where it talks about the board of aldermen, you know, it's going to be the board of aldermen shall do this. And right, so it's by page, right? Yeah, so so it's, if it's it 20 be, times, it's just the one page. Right. Right. So it could be 20. That's where the references to board would come from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The board of aldermen shall do this. And then, and then you don't keep repeating it. Typically, you right. This one's board. meetings of the board, so that whole section. Yep. Mm -hmm. But I mean, in general, a lot of these. And, and that's why I mean that's a, that's an estimate on their part. It, it is. We have all these references to board or board of aldermen. We assume at least a quarter of them are going to refer to a different board and won't need to be changed. I think that's even more reason to do. What Quinn was talking about just a statement there that's an all purpose and then any changes things going forward we just make an update make changes yeah because the lmo is a huge portion of our code of ordinances right the lmo does not go so, it doesn't. Yeah. so we would just replace the verbiage when we do the lmo yeah, you could pay staff nineteen dollars per page to make those changes. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're the ones that would be making it. Okay. You stay there. I like the idea of doing it incrementally. My only concern would just be, or not really concerned, but just that it gets done. You know, not doesn't take ten years yeah. to get oh, yeah. through it. Yeah. You know, that it would just be done in a timely fashion. Could we, you know, establish that we're going to do a certain portion of it in this upcoming fiscal year and then split it? We could or do could we look and see what we have at the end of this fiscal year left over? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. the question really is how much are we willing to spend now versus total, right? I mean, what are we talking about total? Is it really $5,000 or is it something south of that? It, it would likely be south of that. So are we kidding ourselves by spending twelve fifty now and twelve fifty later? As opposed to doesn't do as it. Stephanie suggested, you know, we don't really know that I guess the question is we have time to really determine what the real cost is. Right. 
And so we're not in a rush to change. I'm not saying we we should prolong this process. Well, but yeah, it'd be I mean, nice to know does it make sense to go ahead and do it all in one swoop, mm -hmm. or as in, as Quinn suggested, maybe we do it incrementally. If it's if it's a matter of a couple thousand dollars more to do it, I think we depend on the wisdom of of the staff to, to make that decision because I'm I'm hearing what Monty's saying is saying that's not going to break the bank. Yeah. Um, and so um, and if there's a small bonus you can give to staff to give them an incentive to make some of the changes, that's okay with me too. I I we don't we don't have to hire someone to do it. You know that for instance like the the LDL, I mean the uh, code changes that Pam presented tonight. I normally send that in to Munico once the board has approved it. Well, in this case, I could hold those changes yes. and not submit them until after you, I would have to wait until after you all vote on April 12th for the charter change. And then go ahead and make the change here locally in, in, in the house and then submit it to Moon Code. So that's your first major we're changed now to council person or whichever one you choose. I just need to know what you want to do so I can work with that. So what is on our agenda for tonight is really focused on the resolution of intent. Exactly. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any thoughts, questions about that aspect of it since so then it doesn't there's get still several steps i was going to say so yeah. we're not even thinking about spending the money yet but how much how long can she hold changes though that's the only thing well, i mean it'll be fine it'll be fine yeah. okay oh, yeah. and that's all that's all i needed to hear from staff so and i still think we're on track for the the 12th even if we decide because we're sending stuff in to, okay. to vote on the 12th we can spend the 19 dollars just to have it on the first of our ordinances and then decide after that. So now we're official, we're changed to town council and then we can decide, do we want to spend all the money now? Do we want to yeah. increment it up? But we can just make it so. We don't have to. Right. Right. Um, so I'll make a motion to pass the resolution of intent. Make up that. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous vote. Thank you everybody. Moving on to new business, Board of Aldermen meeting schedule. Diane, or... <laughs> you know what? Let's just give the floor to Diane tonight. <laughs> well, um, I went back in and um, created your calendar. I've got several people waiting with paint, painted breath to get this calendar from me. So um, you, January and February, of course, it shows uh, indicates that you have an agenda session regular meeting and then March agenda session regular meeting and we've inserted for March the 28th your work session and that that's the our first work your first work session and then we are on track going forward starting with April 12th that the regular meeting remains on the second Tuesday and work sessions are on the fourth Monday. So I, I, I would just, uh, if I've heard that sometimes in pa some past years that a July meeting did not take place. If we set this now, does that mean that July meeting has to take place or can we cancel that? No, we can cancel any meeting yeah. we want. We okay. just have to give enough public notice. Public notice. The only meetings that I have a problem with are the July meetings. I will not be at either one of those because I'm going to be at summer camp one week and on vacation the other week. So that's that's the only one that, that bothered me, but everything else was okay. I mean, December 26 doesn't sound like a lot of Yeah, fun. I was going to bring that up that because we don't even work. Yeah. So maybe we would cancel the work session in December or try to incorporate as much as we can into the regular meeting for the January regular meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would work. Or we could do a regular meeting and then a work session right afterwards on the 13th. On the 13th, yeah, I, yeah, I assume that's what you were talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, hold them together to the extent that we know what's going to be coming up in January, which you know, we'd have some idea, we probably wouldn't have a complete idea. 
And if we need to, you know, if there's something of an emergent nature, we can still put it on the agenda first meeting in January and just um, walk through it a little bit more than we typically would uh, and be back on schedule. Okay. I do want to push. I think the schedule is, is, is a good, is a good schedule. The question is, will we continue to do our meetings uh, both live and Zoom? Is there any reason why we would not? doesn't cost us anything, does it? Yeah, I mean, I think it just provides additional transparency and the ability for other staff and people to join. So there's nothing we need to really incorporate into our communication to the public. By this is our schedule. There will be a live uh, ability to participate. And then the other question I had, Rich, and maybe you can find this out. Obviously with the ability for us as members to participate via Zoom was really important. And was it helpful for obviously for us to continue doing our business? Um, do we know if the state's going to change that? It sounds like they probably won't. But like for you, you may be on vacation. You may want to participate in a meeting if there's a critical piece yeah. of information or vote. Um, will we be able to do that? That's something to think yeah, about. I, yeah. I agree. You can always participate, but the vote is part yeah, of the meeting. That's, 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 that's what yeah. we find out. Yeah, I, I agree. We need to find out if that's long standing or if that's if we're still under an emergency order for that. Um, I would know on June 27th that there was something critical on July 12th or something like that. But because of our, I'd and, have to actually leave the camps. And I think I said this before, I have joined prior to the pandemic, I had joined a meeting on Zoom, but wasn't able to vote. So there's always that option too. Um, but I also want to just reiterate, it's okay to miss a meeting. Like, right. you know, we all have stuff. I've right. missed meetings. I, I don't know if okay. everybody has. Have you ever missed a meeting? I'm not jumping in on this. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. But, you know, there's going to be times when we all have to miss a meeting. So, you know, if, if you can't make it, you can't make it. And if I'm on vacation, I'm probably not going to join. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. I mean, but I also try to schedule you, you didn't have a choice, but in right. general, right? But there's work trips that I don't have control over. Like, right. I know June 27th, I'm going to be in San Diego. Right. So. But as of right now, you could be on Zoom and vote. Well, or you don't need to vote, okay? Because yeah, you're mayor. I don't have a vote anyway. But right. Mark would lead that meeting. Mark would lead that meeting, yeah. Okay, that's helpful. I will not miss any of these meetings. <laughs> Ever. Big words. Okay. No, just these that are there. I don't have anything scheduled right now. Okay. I was really pleased though. Can the notes please read that Clint Ray will not miss <laughs> <laughs> the meeting? Those are the meetings. <laughs> <minutes. laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. 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 Approving the schedule provided to us without December 26, we will combine the regular meeting and the work session to December 13th. Any other comments, questions? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. I'll second that. Later. All in favor say aye. Aye. <clears throat> that passes unanimously. So proud of us tonight. All right, moving on to reports, town manager. A couple items, uh, just direct everybody to our town website and recreation website for all the activities that are going on. Um, the nice weather, I think the <clears throat> number of activities at the parks are starting to pick up. And as a reminder to everybody that this Friday, music is returning to our West College Plaza in downtown Elon. This is our our, our first full season, but a third season of, we're trying to decide whether it's Music to Dine to, MTDT, M2D2, that sounds kind of Star Wars yeah, work, right. but yeah. so this is our third full, third season of M2D2, mm -hmm. um, and Love and Valor is going to be our opening act, so um, people who know the local music scene, uh, Love and Valor is at the top of that list, I think. It starts at six, runs until eight, so get there early, get a seat, get some dinner, and enjoy an alfresco meal uh, uh, out on the plaza, such as it is so far. The twos look a little weird. That's fine. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm looking on the website. I don't, yeah. So what does it say on the posters? Because don't we have like a little graphic that we need to, I think. Just like written out in words? I think so. Probably T O, not T W. Obviously. Or maybe T O O. Um, okay, that was my only comment. The twos look a little strange to me. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Like I said, you know, trying to find that kitschy little. N2 uh, D2. Yeah. That's harder to say than music to die to. <laughs> and MTDT, I, you really have to think about it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's also harder to type M2D2. Mm -hmm. You leave your finger on the shift key, then you know, with M at D. It doesn't work. Well, yeah, a lot of Matt Dat. Maybe you call it Matt Dat. <laughs> that's all I have this evening. <laughs> Moving on, <laughs> we will start with Quinn tonight. Oh, I did? Okay, no, we're gonna start with Stephanie and um, So I didn't want to surprise anybody coming up for the next meeting for the work session on the 28th. I've asked Rich um, and informed Pam as well that I would like to look at Aspen Avenue again. Um, I did a little bit more research on it and called the folks at the North Carolina Department of Transportation. And then also when I was at the League of Municipalities, there was a, um, the top lawyer there, Tom Carruthers, uh, who used to represent the town, uh, the town of the city of Greensboro rather for many, many years, um, just to get his take on what was going on. Again, this is not a, by any means um, something for us to decide on. It was just something that I felt like we should give some time to at our next meeting as far as um, comments from the neighbors in that area, because two things that surfaced that got my attention were, um, one, it, it looks as though, and, and we may need to clarify this, um, that Aspen Avenue, where it abuts, does belong to the town of Elon. And then if you look at, um, and again, I don't want anybody to have to look this stuff up, but 160A is what all our covenants fall under for municipalities. Um, 296 is what covers the roads. And it says that we do have the ability to shut down permanently or temporarily um, any road that falls under our jurisdiction. But with that being said, um, you do have to follow into different cases of whether there's proper egress and ingress to the developers there. Um, and there are three other points of ingress and egress that it looks like um, he has already determined, which are Brookfield Drive, Driftwood Drive, and Ashley Woods Drive. All of those fall in Gibsonville, where Aspen Avenue is Elon. Um, so the one thing that I'll just uh, take away from uh, Mr. Crothers is the fact that um, he had said the burden was being put on our taxpayers because they weren't getting any benefit from this. So the taxpayers for, for Elon would be getting the extra traffic, um, safety issues, um, maintenance to the road where they're not getting any of the property taxes from, from this development. So with that being said, um, Rich and, and staff, or however this works, pardon me if I'm not saying it correctly, um, have added to the uh, 28th work session comments from the neighbors. Um, and I think it's within 500 feet that you're going to let them know um, just so that we can get a sense of what the neighborhood thinks about this. They may not have a problem with it. They may have a problem with it. It would just be nice to know. Um, and then we can get further um, information from our town attorney, um, I would assume in a closed session since we're looking at liability or litigation. So I just wanted to update you all on what I was looking for that. And that's all I have, believe it. Um. So my birthday's tomorrow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go around to 40. Um, wow. So I'll be catching Emily. You rounding up to 40 or down to 40? I'll round up to 40. Okay. Can I round down? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm look forward to music to dine to. Also with the recreation and parks, the 19th is a, their Arbor Day event that they're having at Best Smith Park. Um, um, the 19th, that's Saturday. Uh, okay. You can plant seeds and or trees and having a whole planting of events and then we were supposed to the arts committee do our yarn bombing um kind of unless anybody's out there that has a bunch more yarn that's ready to go we haven't got as elaborate as we thought we were going to so 
two of the main people that were supposed to to be there are on spring break and so because we were wanting to hope to do this before they um the students got back so sunday night we're gonna go out do the yarn bombing and it'll be ready for two weeks um, we might push it back a day uh, or maybe to the following weekend if you have any old knitted scarves or crochet blankets uh, we'll, we'll use those and find a place to, to put them but as of right now uh, we just have my bike um so look, looking forward to 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 and put some art into the town but other than that that is it i just like to do a quick uh follow-up uh, to the um uh, to the quilt show um, the quilt show took place this last week, and uh, again, there was some expectation that things could be a little bit better, but it went way better than they can than they ever imagined. Um, there were um, over six hundred between six hundred and six hundred and fifty visitors to the event, mm -hmm. and so our restaurants saw an improvement as well. Um, we saw several of the quilters because many of them had the um, the quilters had also put together a display for Ukraine uh, with a blue and yellow flags or blue and yellow ribbons. And many of them were coming into the restaurants. We, we had gotten some report on that. Uh, but the quilters um, felt it was one of the best things that they, the best moves they had made. And so, so the venue worked out very well for them. And I just wanted to say that uh, that kind of thing can happen even more often too. Um, one of the things that that are that they uh, the venue really helps with is uh, it was you know well lighted and just the perfect space someone had come in and said they had gone to a quilt show in norfolk and they were just overwhelmed they said this was just the right number it was a nice you didn't get overwhelmed by all the different designs and and uh and it really was a work of art and if anyone went in to experience it it really was in a sense a, a moving experience. In other words, you came in and you were moved by the different designs and the colors and the kinds of captionings that were, were there. And it really was an art show. It was really a, a neat experience. It was my first time ever doing anything I like that. Too. So and I'm glad that some of you were able to, to go to that. Um, the only other thing I have is that uh, just, just this last weekend, I uh, was gifted uh, a vacation for the, uh, for the, for the week after um, Easter, and I had said I was not going anywhere, and I was going to be on the planning, going to the planning board meeting that night. So, if anyone is, is April, April, the April nineteenth. Okay, I appreciate that. And what what month were you just? Well, I was supposed to do in June. And I think that's when yeah. you, you filled in for me, so I'll be glad to do that. Okay, and uh, and I, I still like going to them whenever we can. So, but I just wanted to thank you for bringing that up. So, and I think that's all I have. Right I just want to add on to, to your quilt show stuff because um, uh, they sent us with the arts committee an update with it. Um, that they are presenting a check for fifteen hundred dollars to the Salvation Army um, food pantry. A ton of food too. And then, yeah, they didn't have the pounds of food, but she said it's probably a ton. Um, so that's just awesome. And the farthest person that they were able to talk to came from Ohio, and then quite a few people came from coastal North Carolina. So. I think this is something that would be awesome for our town to awesome. continue to do. Right. I had every intention of coming and just the weather did not suit me. <laughs> I stayed in. Well, well, again, and that's right, the weather was. And again, signage and everything else. We learned a lot from the, this first experience. Yeah. And so we'll keep working. I on. think that's incredible, though. I mean, having hosted events at the church, I mean, yeah. with, I mean, that's incredible, 600. They were blown away. Yeah. They were very, very pleased with what happened. So it was a good thing. Uh, I don't have a lot. I think uh, I was glad to see the tent back up on uh, college. I think that will uh, yep. help encourage more people to get out and, and dine outdoors. Yeah. And I look forward to when we can we have some arrangement. That's, that's something we have to work as a board to how we're going to fund it, how we're going to, how that's going to look. Um, a lot of work has been done, so the challenge is up to us to figure it out. Um, glad to see spring here. Um, students will be coming back and appreciate the work Rich is doing. Obviously, you got some big shoes to try to fill those four shoes that, uh, pairs of shoes that. Some of them are high heels. That's really <laughs> tough. <laughs> well, you may not have to, but 
Uh, but yeah, so anything we can do as a board to help support you, by all means, let us let us know. Um, I noticed you posted Pam's job, and but that wasn't as an assistant town manager, just a planning director, right? Right. And looking at it, it just to address it, my my feeling was it was more important to get a planner into that position who can run the department. Obviously, we're filling other positions, and at some point, once everything has settled down a little bit, if we, you know, make that decision, all right, we need to look at who we have about elevating them to a assistant town manager, then we can pick and choose who that's going to be. So, uh, it's I don't think it's going away yet forever, but I think it was more important to get the, the <coughs> topic professionals in place and before without adding the complication of assistant town manager and that's fine that means you can't wait <laughs> i'm going home for dinner in a minute or two okay. <laughs> leave the only thing between you and dinner is mark and i <laughs> believe me i won't be long uh speaking of filling positions i was uh, uh i'm on the downtown committee and we had uh uh wasn't able to, to participate in an interview yesterday, but I was on Friday virtually and I uh, really enjoyed that process. And uh, I think hopefully pretty soon we can get somebody in that position for our downtown. <clears throat> Two good interviews, yep. Yeah. Oh, he was short and sweet. Okay, um, so just encouraging everyone to drive by at night. We have installed some blue and yellow lights out on the front porch, facing the front porch. They didn't quite shine as big and bright as we had intended, but now they're like where they can be seen, we think. They're over, they're over the front door, shining down. So the, that front entrance way, the hope is that it, that, and, uh, and maybe we need to like, quadruple the number of lights that we ordered and then chime on them. <laughs> just use the fixtures there, right? We did, yeah. Yes, here. It, it, it was more difficult than I expected it to be. We had four floodlights, two blue and two yellow, that we were shining on, you know, either side of the front walls, but you have windows and you have shrubs, and then you had these really bright can lights in our in our porch. That, that was really, I think, the biggest obstacle is that those bright can lights were washing it all out. So we decided to just put the blue and yellow into the can lights. And I haven't seen it at night yet, so I don't know how effective it is. I, Still not what I'd hoped, I think. I really thought we would get Thank nice. you for trying. I don't, you know, it, municipal buildings all over the country and world are doing it i'm, I, I'm actually well, forward. Really interested in trying to for the future put lights up that we can do colors of whatever for whatever reason i i will handle that i, I will talk to you before you leave about doing it well i i, I, I was a, i'd like to take a vote that the alderman who won't miss a meeting all year <laughs> is gonna maybe help us get some yeah yeah for, for, for sure so i i was a touring lighting designer all right for, for a band for like eight years there we go uh, and there we go. outdoor festivals there we go. I, there we go. I will I'm right. with it so yeah, i don't know if anybody's been to the fat frog at night and seen all their lights on their stage so I installed their whole light rig and all the blind tigers light rig in Greensboro. So, uh, we, we, we can do it. Good to know. We, we, we can do this. I'm, I'm, I'm wonderful. I mean, I was putting out feelers on Facebook. You know, I know any electricians out there or lighting experts and all the while. It was all along, you was sitting right here. No, I right here. never missing a meeting. <laughs> we appreciate your help. He was keeping his light under a bushel. So. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and then... Um, the only other thing that I had is that um, I have been thinking about reinstituting the community cleanup events. So um, if if we get those off the ground sometime, I'll keep you all informed. But, uh, the weather's nice. There's lots of trash to be cleaned up. So there's a good opportunity for that. When does the state do the cleaning coalition? Do we want to invite the uh, board that they, they want to join us for the spring? Oh, yes. Oh, 
So Stephanie reminded me, um, on March 24th, the Neighborhood Coalition is um, meeting here at 515. Right. That's, um, uh, that's what I remember. Yes, yeah. here at 515 to go out to neighborhoods where there are a lot of rental properties um, to just discuss with them about, you know, introducing ourselves, being a good neighbor, you know, having some very positive conversations um, as a means of hopefully at least minimizing some of the issues that we see throughout town. Okay, do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Unanimous vote. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you. Uh, so, Pam, will you be here at our next session? Yes, I will be.